Hello from a new video, but from the same day as my last video, which you can see up here. Ah, it's raining harder than I thought. I shall reverse back into the doorway. The last video saw me doing a whole bunch of stuff on the closet, culminating and putting a little bit of clay on the wall. And now it's the same day and I'm just pushing on with more claying. And I'm also going to determine where I put some holes. I'll fasten in a couple other shelves and who knows what else. It's the evening, so I probably won't do too much work tonight, but I'll see what I can get done. At a minimum, I want to get rid of this godforsaken wheelbarrow that's been in my house for two weeks and move it outside finally and create some space. So my very exciting Friday night plans are to empty this wheelbarrow of clay and stick the clay onto the wall. But before I carry on with the clay, I'm going to linseed oil these shelves because Having them oiled will make wiping any clay off that gets onto the shelves, which is bound to happen, it'll make it a lot easier. I should probably put some gloves on to do this, but they're all muddy and my other gloves are somewhere in the polytunnel, so I'm not gonna. I'll just be careful. This is a mix of 50-50 linseed oil and turpentine. And the turpentine is in there to allow the linseed oil to sink into the wood a bit better. And it also means that it'll dry a bit more quickly as well. And I guess I don't really have so much experience with, with wood stains. And the ones that I've used, they always seem really blotchy and I don't think they really look good. So I kind of just stick with linseed oil. And therefore everything in my place is kind of this weird orange color. I do like it. I do like how the grain pops with the oil. And you know what? Might as well be consistent. So <laughs> pretty much all the wood in my place is going to be this color. And that's okay with me. It's getting dark out there and I hear somebody, somebody that probably wants to come in and get dry. Come on, little guy. Oh, oh yeah, you're soaked. You are soaked. Yeah, what do you think of that? Not nice out there, is it? Oh, and who is this? Hello. Let him in, let him in, Larry. <laughs> you guys, they're so wet. Don't worry, I will get the towel and dry you guys off after you enjoy your little snack. So work is continuing, which is fine with me. I'm happy to be indoors. I don't really need to be going anywhere on this fine Friday night. And I'm quite happy with my choice of playing with some clay. So I'll just get back to it now that the the boys are inside. We can all hang out together indoors. So I've got a bunch of clay to use up, but I have a bit of a dilemma because I want to put holes in the wall, but I want to use glass bottles to make them uniform. And the bottles that I have are a little bit too big to fit between these slats. Plus I kind of want it to be a little bit more random. So don't, I don't exactly know yet what I'm going to do. I'll have to probably cut away portions of the slats so that I can make the holes. And that's going to be a really faffy and annoying job that I don't feel like doing right now. So instead, I'm going to focus on putting the clay in the parts where I know that there's not going to be any holes, along the sides and at the bottom, and then I'll deal with this issue later on. Let's have some light. That's better.
So this is proving a little bit more frustrating than expected because as I push on one side, the other side falls off and my arms are only so long so I can't really do both sides at once, especially with this thing in the way. So I have a feeling I'm going to have to just do a little bit, let the clay dry a little bit and come back to it tomorrow. So the wheelbarrow will live on in my house for just a little longer and I'm just going to have to deal with it. So I'll say goodnight. It's dark. I'm tired, as maybe you can tell. I don't know why I'm so close to the camera, but that's just how I'm feeling, I suppose. So I'll see you guys tomorrow when I won't be actually working on clay, at least not in the morning. I'll be going to my friend's place at Kila Permaculture Farm, where we'll be bottling the wine from the grapes that I picked back in, I think, September. So that'll be exciting. We'll get to do some wine tasting and see how it all turned out. So I'm going to say good night. It's pretty late. It's dark. I'm tired. And I'll see you guys tomorrow for some wine. Good morning, everybody. Before we go outside, I had a little flurry of activity last night and I powered on with the wall. I was really tired by the end of it, but I'm happy I got it done. I put most of the clay in the back part, which needed a little bit of bulking up and it allowed me to get rid of the clay, but still being able to delay about where I put the, the holes in the wall. So I'm not exactly sure what I'm gonna do. This is probably how I'll do the layout for the shelves or something similar with one more small one up there. But I still have time to think about it because today is all about making wine. Actually, that's a lie. Today isn't about making wine, the wine is made. Today is all about tasting the wine. So I've got some hummus in here. We're gonna have a shared lunch together with all of the people that contributed grapes and have helped in the winemaking process so far. I picked the grapes back in September. We, we've done several things, several stages, a lot of cleaning of the vats, uh, a lot of stomping of the grapes with a big machine, squashing them. We've made some jarapiga and we tasted the wine I think back in November as like a little pre-taste. So we've gathered several times and it's always been really fun. My friend Lawrence at Kila Permaculture Farm has been making wine now for I think three years and so he's really nailing down the process and I'm excited to give this latest vintage a try and share a lunch with some friends as well. So let's go to Kila and try some wine. And almost as exciting as bottling and trying some wine, the wheelbarrow is finally out of my house. Until the next batch, that is. All right, let's go. So this is Lawrence. Which vintage is this? Is this the fourth year you've been doing it? The third year? I think, yeah, fourth or fifth. Fourth or fifth? I think I've experimented five, but okay. this is the fourth with the proper batch. And do you feel like this is going to be the finest vintage of them all? I think the first was actually the best. Yeah. That's when Kiko lived with all right. us and he was a pro. A winemaker. Uh, so, but I think this is the best of the years without him. Okay, that's good. Yeah. That's good. Best of a bad lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll still drink it. We all see, we'll still drink it. We'll get it done. All right. <laughs> cool. So we've cleaned out the big vat. We're going to... Empty part of it out? Why do we do that? Yeah, so we've got two vats full and we're going to empty it all out and mm -hmm. make a blend between the two. Mm -hmm. Then what we'll do is we'll fill one of the vats, we'll, uh, we'll clean one of the vats to get all the, all the sediment and dead yeast and crap out and then fill it back up again. It has to be completely full 
to age. Okay. And then whatever's left, we'll put into bottles, split between us all. And are you excited for this vintage? You've tried two of the other ones, right? Or just one so one, far? Actually, two of the other ones. Okay. Yeah. One of your previous year, last year, and then this year. Yeah, I'm quite excited. And you're quite an, a wine aficionado. Yeah. So you know your stuff. Let's get so, tasting. All right, all right. We're excited. <laughs> I'll drink whatever. <laughs> so the wine tasting is happening, but I wanted to first come over, say hello to Lawrence's lovely mother. Hello, lovely Hello. mother, Nandana, who is cooking up a feast for our communal lunch. Some kind of a pumpkin curry. Pumpkin stew Persian style. Amazing. Makes amazing Persian food. Have you tried the wine yet? The wine, not yet. Okay. Yeah, I, there was one left over from last year. We uh -huh. tried that. It was scrumptious. All right. Let's see what this year is, tastes like. So this is the blend. I yeah. think we should do the blend. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. Oh, I haven't yeah. tried it yet. Yeah. 2023 vintage. Oh, it's a fine vintage. I actually <laughs> really like this. Yeah. I, think I, like the I haven't tried the blend yet. I don't yet. want to say yeah, I'm actually, surprised, I'm but I also need it. to say that I'm surprised. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to say it, but I am. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. It's it's definitely good. The next person yeah. does half from the other. Okay, let's move the sofa. Very nice. High fives. Teamwork, guys. Teamwork makes the dream work, guys. Yeah, well. Go team. Okay, me and Christine, everyone else. Yeah, oh, sorry, we're not doing <laughs> Okay, one more time. Try again, try again. Power Rangers. Go, Go team. team. The sun is shining and the noise you can possibly hear in the background is all of my batteries charging to try to take advantage of this amazingly beautiful day. I've got the workbench set up, I've got some cooler clothes on because it's roasting out here. And I have 13 bottles of wine. So we got just under 25 liters of wine and I think that calculates to around 32 750 ml bottles 
And that's not including the, the wine tax of 50%. So we actually got twice as much. So we would have got 64 bottles of wine from what was basically one person, me, picking grapes in the morning. I think I ended up with five big buckets of grapes and I'm really surprised at how much wine that actually translated into. So we take half the wine and the other half goes as a wine tax to the winemaker. So Keila gets that, Lawrence gets that wine and that's fair enough. He's been doing this now for I think five years. He's got the know-how, he's got all the stuff and there's lots of work that goes on behind the scenes as well. So it's nice to participate in this wine co-op that he's set up where we can all come together and not each need to buy our own materials and our own equipment and everything and we can benefit from his experience and knowledge that he's been building over the years. I'm really excited to crack open a bottle of this wine when my parents get here and we'll do a taste test on camera with them. So that'll be fun to share. They get here at the end of April and they're staying for a month. I know a lot of you look forward to seeing them so that's fast approaching and I'm really excited to see them and to share our experience with you as well. So that's all about the wine. It was really fun yesterday but it's time to get back to work on my wall inside the cupboard. So I've got some stuff set up out here in the beautiful sunshine. I'm gonna keep making some shelves and I'm going to put them in place. I'll mix up some clay and you'll see me again when I'm ready to continue with the wall where I'm gonna try to figure out how to make these little air hole, light hole things that I have in mind. I don't have a full idea, so I'm gonna ponder it as I work and I'll see you guys very soon. So I've been mixing the clay. I've got it ready to go. The wheelbarrow will be going back inside the house, but this time it's just a little batch, so it shouldn't be sitting in there for weeks at a time. And so after much effort, these shelves are in place. I've oiled them up, and I'm pretty sure I have a rough idea of what I want to do. I think I'm going to aim to have a hole behind each shelf so the light shines through, sort of like a backlight. And then I don't know about the rest. I'll probably put a hole somewhere here, a hole somewhere there, a hole somewhere there. I'll do something at the top. I haven't figured out how I want to do that yet. Probably a hole there. And I think what I'll do is clay everything in, leaving a pretty ample space so that I can saw the wood out where I need to once the clay dries a bit. So I have a rough idea of what I want to do and I'm pretty anxious to get going. So even though the sun is shining and it's a beautiful day, I'm back inside for another push on the wall. Okay, let's get started.
So I've been making some pretty good progress on the wall. I've mixed up what is actually the last bit of clay that I have. So that could be a problem because I don't think I'll be able to finish everything just with this. But I think that's okay as long as I'm smart with where I end up placing these last little bits of clay. I want to build it up so that the slats are all held in place so that I can saw them out and create the holes. That's the idea. I've had to actually stop for a while to wait for parts of it to dry. I can't reach this with both arms, so pushing it through from one side makes it fall off the other side. Uh, so I've taken a two hour break. Actually, I take that back. It wasn't a two hour break. It was a two hour break from working on the clay wall. I've actually been down on my bottom terrace strimming. So I've got loads of grass all over me. There's a decent chance I have grass all over my face. Haven't looked in a mirror. I'm just ready to get back into the work. Um, so hopefully it's dry enough now and hopefully this stuff gets on the wall without pushing it through to the other side. So I guess all I can do is use up the remainder of the clay and hope that it's enough to hold these slats in place. Which might not make sense right now, but when I come back and saw these pieces out, you'll, you'll see why. Clay, unfortunately, isn't something that's easy to get. I do have friends down the road that have some, but I don't know, it's kind of something I keep asking for. And I think they're quite happy to give it to me. But you also feel kind of like a pest when you're always bugging people for something. And I do barter with them for it even though I don't even think they would care if I did. But but still, it would be really, really nice to have my own source of clay uh, on my land. But my land is so tiny that it's not likely to happen. Um, I'm not gonna be digging massive holes everywhere to look for clay, but Sinead's place is a lot bigger than mine. So I'm sort of hoping we'll do a little clay hunting on her land and hopefully not only will we be able to find some clay, but we might also be end, end up finding some good spots to build a pond. Because I think if you're building ponds, you want the cl clay to be... I think if you're building ponds, you want the soil to be um, clay rich so that it holds the water better. And this part over here is really awkward to reach. But I feel like it's dry enough that it's not pushing it off the other side. Yeah, it seems okay over on this side. So I guess it's just about being patient and working with the material. Clay is definitely an incredibly versatile material and obviously it has various stages of being dry and the gloopier it is, the harder it is to stick to a wall. And it seems like I have achieved uh, an adequate level of gloop so that it's staying where it's supposed to stay. At least, I hope so. I probably should have put some nails in here um, to hold the whole top in place. It's not the end of the world. It just means that when it dries, it's more likely to separate from the top. Um, but I can fill it later, so that's fine. Um, but maybe it would have saved me a bit of work later on. However, what's done is done, and it's not the end of the world. And then I guess the idea is to make some holes. I don't know if I want a hole here, but the beauty of clay is that I can see how this all looks. And if I don't like a hole, I can just uh, fill it in. And if I want another one put in, I can, I don't know, make it. It'll be a little difficult because of the wooden slats, but if I decide I want a hole that I haven't planned for, I'm sure I can make it work somehow. So the clay is gone. This seems to be sort of staying onto the wall. 
and let's turn the lights on, take a step back and see what it looks like. Well, if I'm being brutally honest, it looks pretty crappy, but I trust my vision. I feel like I'm on the right track. Once I cut these out, make the holes a little nicer, I think it's going to look really cool. Right now, it's a bit of a mess. It's a little frustrating to have to wait for it to dry before I can continue working on it, but I need to get more clay anyway. So it's just how things go. Sometimes you run out of materials. I ran out of sand for a long time and it stopped work on the tool shed, but now I have sand so I can start up on that again. So you just have to kind of go with the flow sometimes. And I wish I had just a little bit more clay to do that top corner. And I might be able to get some from another friend I'm visiting tomorrow, but for the moment, this is how it'll stay. It's a little bit too squishy to be able to mess around with it too much. I'll, I'll want to come with a float thing and make it all a bit flatter and squash it all in a bit more. But right now, this is just going to stay how it is. And I'm going to move on to other things. But I'm happy with it so far. And even though the lights shining out from the slats looked really, really cool, it was never my intention to leave those like that. I always was going to cover it up with clay. Some people suggested just leaving the slats but I kind of want this corner enclosed. I want it to be sort of nice and cozy and having it open and seeing through the stuff in the cupboard would have just looked weird to me. So though the light is amazing, I'm hoping that with a bit of refinement, the light coming out of these holes behind whatever I put on the shelves will also look really cool as well. So before I wrap up for the evening, I just want to take you on a little stroll down on the land on this incredibly beautiful evening. It's just gorgeous out. Spring is definitely here. Got these incredible irises. I just love them. I think they look so cool. They always pop up here. They just have been there since I moved in. And yeah, the sky is beautiful. There's birds chirping and lots of bitey insects are actually around at the moment. Uh, that's one of the downfalls of the spring coming is that the bitey things come out. And one of the benefits of spring is that fruit starts to come. So I've got lots of little baby plums on the way. This tree was packed with flowers, so I think it's going to be an amazing harvest. I can see loads of plums up there. And it looks like I've got lots of uh, lime flowers as well on the way. It doesn't look as healthy as it did last year, but let's see how it goes. I've got some kiwi stuff happening. You can see the neighbors. I think those are cherry trees. Those are coming to life. Got some goji berry plants looking pretty nice despite neglecting them very severely. These have really nice flowers and I've had a couple berries off of it, but I haven't given it much, given it much attention. It probably needs to be pruned. It's pretty unruly and kind of going everywhere. But the most exciting part is down here on this terrace, I'm working on clearing away the firewood and taking it to Sinead's barn. That's not the exciting part though. The exciting part is that I have loads of little almonds on the way. So these little fuzzy guys are almonds and last year, I think I had three almonds and two of them were eaten by something. So I've got so many more this year. I think this tree is about four years old now. I planted it right when I moved in. It was one of the very, very first things I did. The apple tree is starting to bud just now. And the one on the bottom terrace is a little bit farther ahead. But yeah, this is one of my favorite times of the year. And I just wanted to share this gorgeous evening with you. Hello Larry. How's it going? Always chilling in the doorway. Waiting for cuddles. It's been a couple of days since I worked on this wall. And I'm hoping that the clay is of adequate squishiness so that when I saw away these supports, it'll still be held in place on the sides. I'm pretty sure it will be. 
and it's soft enough so that I can still move the clay around if I need a little bit more space. Because my plan is a little bit dubious, I'm going to be using this guy to sort of just attempt to nibble away little by little uh, with the front of the saw. So this is definitely not the ideal tool for the job. I could have used a much smaller, narrower saw for this, but I don't have one. So this is my plan. Let's see how it goes. So I think this idea is just crazy enough to work. It's going to be very slow, but the slats are kind of wobbling around a little bit as I saw. So I'm going to leave this for another day, I think, at least. But that's okay because the reality is that I can't really do much until I get more clay. There's going to be some kind of sweet spot where this will be just dry enough to hold the slats in place and still wet enough to be able to attach the new clay to it. So I'm hoping to get some more clay soon. I'll send a message today and fingers crossed they've got some more stuff for me. So the wall needs more time to dry. I need to find some more clay. Seems like a good time to end the video. I hope you enjoyed this one. If you haven't subscribed, please do. If you like the video, please share it around and give it a like. And I'll see you in the next one.